please step forward. <laughs> and you will please repeat after me. I, I having been appointed to the high office of Chancellor of the University of Mines and Technology, Takwa, having been appointed to the high office of Chancellor of the University of Mines and Technology, Takwa, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, do in the name of the Almighty God swear, that I will be faithful and true to the university, that I will be faithful and true to the university, that I will at all times preserve, protect, and defend the act and statutes of the university. That I will at all times preserve, protect, and defend the act and statutes of the university. And that I shall dedicate myself to the service and well-being of the university. And that I shall dedicate myself to the service and well-being of the university. And to do right to all manner of persons and to do right to all manner of persons. I further solemnly swear, I further solemnly swear, that should at I at any time break this oath of office, that should I at any time break this oath of office, I shall submit myself to the act and statutes of the University of Mines and, Te and Technology, Takwa. I shall submit myself to the act and statutes of the University of Mines and Technology, Taka. And suffer the penalty for it. And suffer the penalty for it. So help me God. So help me God. a ceremony of an outstanding Ghanaian statesman, my former boss, His Excellency John Ajekum Kufo, the second president of the Fourth Republic. It is entirely appropriate that he who was responsible for ensuring that the Western University College of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology through presidential asset on 12th November 2004 became the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, should be appointed as the first chancellor of this university. Presidency. <laughs> It is a well-deserved honor given in recognition of the immense work you did during your time as President of the Republic, not only for Umat, but also for Mother Ghana. Aiko. And I commend the authorities of this university for this admirable gesture. Chancellor, Chair of the University Council, Vice Chancellor, members of the faculty, student, ladies and gentlemen, it is apt that on a special occasion such as this, when the first chancellor is being inducted into office, a present is given to the university. I have been informed and heard about the number of legacy projects on campus. The energetic Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Amewu, has assured me that through the Minerals Development Fund, these legacy projects will be completed soon in commemoration of today's event. I've also been informed the 26 square kilometers of land 
have been donated to the university by the chiefs and people of the Wasafiasi traditional area. And I don't hear them Designs for the construction of a 20,000 student capacity campus have been completed, awaiting funds to the commencement of the project. I'm pleased to announce the government will give an annual special budgetary allocation of 5 million CDs to the university. to the university for the realization of this project. This happy ceremony is for me in two parts. The second relates to the decision taken by the Council of Umat in accordance with the statutes of the university to rename this institution after George Alfred Grant, the legendary Aximborn entrepreneur, Pa Grant. It is a most excellent decision which has received the agreement of the President of the Republic so that once the parliamentary process has been completed, this university will be called the George Grant University of Mines and Technology. It is wholly fitting that this great modest man who can lay legitimate claim to being the father of modern Ghanaian nationalism should be properly honored by a grateful posterity, i.e. by us who are the heirs and beneficiaries of the freedom he so valiantly fought for, especially by citizens of his native western region. I'm sure that you can appreciate what a special moment it will be for me, a descendant of four of the myriad of persons who assembled at Salt Pond under his presidency to launch the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC of most blessed memory, on that fateful Saturday of 4th August 1947 when the path to Ghanaian freedom and independence was illuminated to be the president who will have the privilege to assent to this decision. Long may we cherish his memory. Once again, Mr. Chancellor, I would like to congratulate you and wish you the very best of luck and God's guidance in the discharge of your duties. Enjoy every bit of today. You have earned it many, many, many hundredfolds. Thank you, and may God bless us all and our homeland down and make our great peace.